Welcome to the channel. This is Go Greddy and welcome to my climb towards an A plus DR driver rating. Tonight, 699 points is all I need to get there. Can I get that top five finish that I'm looking for so I can break across that 50,000 point line? Well, you're gonna have to watch to find out. But before we get to the action, if you get to hit the like and or subscribe, I would certainly appreciate it. All right, jumping in the lobby. I'm the 18th ranked player in the lobby there. Lots of good folks in there. Lots of people that I normally race with. So I know what I'm dealing with and I'm dealing with a lot of fast folks. So definitely my peer group and, and definitely uh, most of them are a little bit quicker than I am. So I definitely have my work cut out for me in this race. Right before I jumped into this, I ran a 126.3 in qualifying behind Prozac, who was also in this race. Um, and I could have went behind him again. I could have you know, let off the gas, maybe let him come by. But instead, I chose to jump in behind Vanity, who was in the Alfa Romeo. And that was probably a bad choice because Vanity, you will soon find out, ended up being the pole sitter. And I started far enough off his back bumper just in case he had a bad corner or something like that that I wouldn't uh, you know, run up on him. And unfortunately, I, I didn't leave myself in the slipstream <laughs> to start. So I'm basically running this qualifying lap naked. No no slipstream, no help from anyone. And uh, that's, that's not the best way to do it because you can usually shave at least a half a second off your qualifying lap by being in the slipstream of someone else. So poor decision on my part at the beginning, but I have to concentrate, put down a decent qualifying lap to get a good starting position. The racers start coming across the line. I see 128s and 127s, so I'm feeling okay because I think I can run a 126 with this lap, and I do. I run a 126, 874, which was good for P8 to start the race. So qualifying in eighth place. Let's get on to the action of the race glad i did not have to start on the back side of that left hander that could have caused me some issues instead start the race there on the correct side of the 90 degree turn behind little c money in the bmw and i had talked to little c just before this race and he told me he was going to start on medium tires so i knew that he was on mediums and I guess there is something in Gran Turismo that when you start the race, the tires are colder than normal, like practice lobbies or anything else, because I, my tires felt really, really slick at the beginning of the race. And it was kind of aggravating me because I wanted to be right up on Little C Money's rear end so I could you know, take advantage of any opportunity that presented itself to get past him while he was on those mediums because i didn't want to let the guys that were up front on softs get away because i believe what I'm, what I'm seeing here with that gap between fifth and sixth is that px cam 20 uh dsrt and oc charge are on softs and that and not dsrt rather but px cam 20 and the guys in front of him are on the softs and it looks like little i mean i know a little c money's on the medium so um trying to set up a pass little c gets a little loose there so i go out left here he comes back and then i lose sight of my apex hit the curbing kind of bounce and get out the left and that allows shred the tires to get in front of me and then i get hit from behind um by the other mercedes as he got into the dirt a little bit lost the rear end and, and just kind of tapped into me from behind there so that puts prozac on my rear bumper as we head down towards corner two, as I mentioned, you know, he was matching me, you know, hundreds of a second for hundreds of a second. So I know he's got the speed to stay with me. So he falls off at some point, though. I didn't see you know, what happened to him, but uh, he fell off. And so here we are in lap three, just trying to apply pressure to little regret, trying to get a good run out of corner five, heading towards corner six. And I do, but I just tap his bumper a little bit, slows me down, helps him out a little bit. So I'm not able to put it to the inside of him here, heading into corner six which would have been good. I might have been able to get a run going up the hill and uh, send it down the inside, but no such luck. Heading towards the corkscrew, just easing off on the brake, trying to save a little fuel. A little C money makes a mistake. Yes, I get a Greddy pass, so I am moved up to P7 off of money's mistake. Not happy that money made a mistake there. He's a good guy. Uh, that sucks, but 
I, I will I will take the easy passes when they're given to me. So trying to get back here on Little Regret's bumper again, apply that pressure, try to find a crease, try to find a chink in the armor, and make a pass at Laguna. It's so difficult. Um, and I could have started on those mediums, but I didn't want to because I didn't want to fall off of that lead pack, hoping that everybody was starting on softs, and then I would get by a little C money quickly, but that did not happen. Hindsight is always 2020, and uh, you know I can always go back and look at them. Oh, if I'd have done this, I might have done better. But you know, hey, in the race you're trying to race, you're trying to be your race engineer, calculate lap times, fuel rates, <laughs> who's in the pits, who's not, who was on what tire. Uh, it's it's a head full of information while you're trying to hit apexes going around corners. Anyway, so here I go. I'm trying to get another good run on Little Regret coming out of corner five towards, again, corner six. Coming up the hill, the big V8 of the Mercedes just chugging along nicely. Can't seem to catch him. and But he goes wide there, I guess, just trying to carry a little too much speed. Hangs on to it, though, and is able to get it back on track. But he will lose some valuable time to me. One thing I've noticed is I've moved up these lobbies. They get tighter and tighter, and you know every second seems to count. So if you lose a second here or there, or lose a couple seconds, that can that can result in losing two, three, four positions at at the the finish line. And um, so every little mistake compounds. You're just trying to minimize those mistakes and be really fast at the same time. Very difficult, uh, which is why I have so much respect for all these guys who are able to get into that A-plus categories. I make a mistake right here. Big mistake. I will uh, lose time as well. So you can see I was getting there within a second and a half of OC charge and almost in his slipstream. Now I'm falling back two seconds, and the big lead I had on Shred the Tires is, is falling away from almost four seconds down to 2.7 seconds. So... Again, making those mistakes can't make can't afford to make those mistakes. Uh, they they cost you those all, you know positions, and you, you're trying to come up with a pit strategy just to save a second or two, even on fuel. You know, like I'm short shifting here. I'm trying to trying to save fuel where I can. I really want to just ring it out and catch these guys in front of me, but I just can't afford to right now. Move on to the end of lap seven. OC Charge heads into the pits a little, seemingly a little bit early. He's in the Mer he's in the not the Mercedes. He's in the Porsche, like I am. Uh, lap eight, burnout heads into the pits, also on the soft tires. Again, seemingly a little bit early, but you know I, maybe their tire wear is just worse than mine, or whatever they're doing is just a little bit different. Um, I'm, most people were waiting to lap nine to go in on the soft, so I head in lap nine. So does PX Cam 20. He's got 23% fuel left. I've got 29% fuel left, so that bodes well for me. Uh, Prozac comes in on the medium, so he's going to have the soft tire advantage, but he only has 10% fuel, so he's going to lose about a half a second to me on fuel alone. See, it's seven liters per per second actually close to two seconds so that will put him four seconds behind me coming out of the pits as you can see there the mini map people just all over the place so hard to figure out where you are compared to your competitors and their pitch strategies that they're on it's just very difficult as you're trying to calculate this all in your head and determine what's the best thing to do to move up the ranks oh makes your mind hurt and again you're still trying to hit these apexes and take these corners cleanly so here we are on lap 10. I'm about six seconds behind Burnout 3000. I've got about a two and a half second lead over PX Cam 20, who fueled up in the pits and went onto the medium tires. I went in, just slapped on those hard tires. I was single lapper. I'm going to come back in. I will add the medium tires and some fuel to finish out my last stint, which will be a five lapper on those mediums. So I went with the 915 strategy as a, a lot of other drivers did the same. Uh, here you see everyone heading in that was on those soft tires. Look at this. Positions one through four all jumping in now to slap on the medium. So they probably started on the hards there to start the race. So I come in again trying to just get through this painfully long pit stop. It's like a 31 second pit stop with the fuel. So fast forward through there. I come out. Uh, you see Prozac comes in with 1% fuel left. He's going to have to do a lot of refueling there. So I'm going to have a nice lead on Prozac coming out. But 
the next four laps, I really, I need to put my head down. I'm kind of hoping I would catch Team Perez right here and be in that slipstream, but he is just out of my reach as I'm about almost three seconds behind him. Unfortunately, I've got the Merc on my rear end. He's a half a second behind me, and he's going to be applying pressure because he has the racing soft tires on, but I'm not going to let it get to me. I'm going to make him find a way around. I'm just going to hit my apexes. So I come in here, get on that Kirby, get back on the gas. I know that making a pass on turn five, especially a slightly worn soft, so he's still got some good tread left on him, some good life on him. As you can see, he really pulls in there on me. So I'm going to give him the outside line here. I'm going to take away that inside line. Because if he breaks a little too late here or goes off the track, he can grab a penalty. I'm going to stick to the inside. It gives me a little better line coming through the corkscrew. He backs out. Smart life choice. He pulls out. He's going to try and set up the pass against somewhere else. I know he's coming. because <laughs> He's on those softs. And he's going to be able to just get that little bit more grip coming through those corners. So only three tenths behind me as we head into 12. And he gets into my rear a little bit right there not too bad didn't mess me up in fact it probably helped me out a little bit because he hit me hard enough that he had to back off or it caused him to back off so he actually drops about four or five tenths right there so he gives me a little space i changed the brake balance one more to the front just to get a little more bite into this corner as i come around i want that weight on the front end of the car the traction to be maximized i'm trying to get every little bit out of these mediums to stay out in front of that mercedes here on lap 12 so need a good set of corners here look you can see that i grab a purple sector the first sector on the medium tires so i was thinking all right he's gonna have to work to get by me now and head looking here in the rearview mirror he is coming he's coming hard he's getting on the gas trying to make a run on me there he gets wide coming out of corner five into the dirt now i know he's got dirty tires so i gotta take a nice clean corner six into the ray hall straight He's, like I said, got those dirty tires, so I know he's going to be struggling like I did earlier. He's falling back now, you know, almost one and a half seconds behind me. So fast forward on to the penultimate lap. It is lap 14. Little Regret has taken that. He, Like I said, he fell back about to 1.8 seconds or so behind me. He has made that up now. Now he's back within six tenths. I've made up about a second as well on Team Perez. I'm trying to keep my head down, trying to reel in Team Perez because... You see there's a group in front of us. You can see on the mini map, uh, the dots out in front of us. They're going to have to take about a 20 some odd second pit stop to flip onto the hard tires for the final lap. So I am racing against them. I'm trying to get to the start finish line and pass them while they're in the pits so I can get out in front of them because I'm on the medium. So if they're on the hards, they are not going to be able to pass me. They're, they're going to have a very, very difficult time passing me on the final lap if I can get in front of them. The same thing applies if they come out in front of me on those hard tires, then I'm going to have difficulty passing them as well. Because as you saw, even with the Mercedes behind me on the softs, he struggled to get by me because it's just very difficult to set up a pass on these fast sweeping corners. The only really, really good braking zone to you know sling an inside move is either right here or on corner two uh, at the... At the um, the Andretti hairpin and so as we come here we go everyone is in the pits I'm looking for them here they're, they're coming out just past the bridge in front of me it's going to be very very tight I'm a second and a half behind team Perez just starting to get into a slipstream as we come around corner two the Andretti hairpin I come out and PX cam 20 and shred the tires comes out right in front of me three tenths of a second so that second second and a half i lost by going off the track earlier coming back to haunt me had i been on the rear end of team perez i could have come out here in sixth place instead i'm in eighth and i'm looking trying to get a run on him out of this corner i had to back off just a hair there so i didn't get into the bumper of px cam 20 and give him a little boost i back off again here trying to get on the throttle earlier to get a run up the hill but both PX Camp 20 and Shred the Tires get a decent exit out of there. I'm hoping one of them will run deep on the corkscrew, maybe break late on those hard tires. They do not. They're able to make it stick. Shred the Tires does a great job holding that outside line through the corkscrew. Again, just a couple more corners remain on the final lap. Can I make a move? Can I pick up a position? 
trying to get those last points I need for the DR. My last shot, maybe one of these two in front of me will break late here or spin out or get in the dirt as we come through the final corner. They do not PX Camp 20 and shred the tires, hold their cars on the line well. So I will cross the line in P8. So outstanding race. All the folks around me that were racing, great job. PX Cam 20, Shred the Tires, Team Perez, Little Regret, Little C Money, all you guys enjoyed the race a lot. So, so I pick up 176 points for the Manufacturer Series. Not really why. I mean, I, it's, it's it's not my goal is to, to make a top five manufacturer. I wouldn't pick Porsche if I wanted to do that. But I do pick up 468 DR points towards that 50,000. I'm so close. 231 points away. A top 10 next race will put me over the line. So I must have a good result next race. So come and join me in the next one. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it live or if I'm going to do a video. We shall see. It just depends on uh, you know how the family is doing and what's going on in the background. So we'll see. Uh, for myself, go Gretty. Uh, I hope you all had a good race. And uh, if you did, let me know in the comments below. Hit the like, smash the subscribe. I would appreciate all that. And other than that, Man, y'all have a great evening. DJ Clean, take us out of here. <laughs>